is basically the video I wish I had seen before I moved here. If you're an abusive, aggressive, drunk person, please don't live next to me. I got pretty desperate to the point my, my standards got so low at that point. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you are new around here, uh, my name's Yvette and I moved to the UK about two months ago. Um, and in that time, I have learned a myriad of things, so I'm doing a series on all the things I kind of wish I knew before I moved to London. So this video is probably one of the most important ones I, and one I've wanted to make for a while is uh, renting in London. Um, I have never rented before in any country um, and moving to London and renting here was an experience and it was a huge learning opportunity, shall we say, um, and I definitely learned some skills and things that I didn't know beforehand that I really think people could value from. Um, and so this is basically the video I wish I had seen before I moved here. But there's a few things that London's a bit unique for. What I'm going to do to make this video as simple as possible, I'm going to go step by step on how to rent a flat in London um, and some tips and tricks along the way that I learned. Number one, what's your budget? Don't even bother looking until you know how much you can spend. By knowing your budget, you'll obviously, it'll affect where you want to live, how much you can afford to pay in rent, if you have to have roommates, if it's going to be um, a garden flat, a balcony, if there's gonna be a parking space, all things that may affect your situation. So look at your income. I generally don't think you should spend more than 50% on rent, but this is London, so do what you can. Um, but also be, be aware that you have to factor in bills, utilities, internet, etc. So that's why I always think go for 50%, then you'll have a bit of a buffer for the, you know, boring parts, bills. Um, and then you should have some money there to play with, whether that's you're saving for something. I always think it's good to save for a holiday or a house or something more substantial, car, whatever. Budgeting. Number one, the boring, but where you gotta start. Now that you've got that money in the back of your mind, because I don't think it's worth even looking at anything until you know, London, I think when you look at the map, the best thing to do is break it down into the compass. So you've got north, south, east and west. Um, each place generally has a bit of a reputation. Um, so if you're a working professional, you'd probably look more towards West London. If you're more of an artsy person that loves like a bit more gritty um, vibe, you're more likely to go to East London. North London, which is where I am, I don't know what the vibe is here, to be completely honest. I've heard people say posh, but then we also have Camden here, so it's a bit of a mishmash. Um, and then South London, which is like a South of London, not South London, <laughs> South of London, which is basically where all the Australians usually go. That is a broad, broad brush I'm like stroking, stroking, don't like that word, painting with London. Within that little borough, so for example, when we said where I lived, that would have been bad. Okay, you've got Camden, for example. That's a nice area. It's a bit more gritty, but it's artsy, it's fun. There's lots going on, lots of restaurants, lots of nightlife, really fun area. 10 minutes down the road, you have like Wood Green Seven Sisters, which is risky. There's a lot more crime there. Um, nothing personal with people that live there. Just you might want to be aware of those things. So. What I'm trying to say that with London, they often have pockets. So you think like, oh, there's this really expensive, nice area, but then literally next door could be a bit not as nice, rough area. So if that's a problem, definitely. My perspective as someone who moved to London, I will say that I would never put down a deposit on a place before seeing it. Um, that was the advice I was given and I stuck to and I stand by. The photos lie and you can't tell what the vibe is like. For example, um, we went and saw a place, it was great. Ticked all our boxes. It was modern, had a nice little yard for Bambi, was um, in a good area. It was great, the apartment was great, the photos were realistic, it was perfect. So what's the problem? Well, it was a terraced house and the next door terrace was absolutely destroyed. Um, so I asked the landlord, or the tenant, the agency, whoever, and I was like, so like, what's the deal with the fact that the next day neighbor's door is destroyed, the buttons to get to the apartment were destroyed, a window was broken. And he told me that that was council housing, which I'm not actually opposed to council housing as neighbors, like it's not a big deal. Um, however, obviously 
from the property, this is not a neighbor you would want private or public housing anyway. You know what I mean? So if it's a single mom, sure, come live next to me. That's great. If you're an abusive, aggressive, drunk person, please don't live next to me in private or council housing. Thank you. So that's something you wouldn't know unless you went and saw it. So unfortunately you can't cut corners. You really do need to go to these viewings um, and check it out, which leads me to my next point, which is finding places. So you figured out where in London you want to live. Now the other factor in that is money. So you would say, okay, I want to live in East London and I want a roommate because I want to live closer to the city, but um, get more for money by living with some strangers, which is a completely viable option for people. Obviously I'm in a couple, so it's a little more awkward for us, so we prefer our own space, but it's still, I know thousands of people that have done that, so very normal in London. Places I recommend, three main websites. You've got Rightmove, which is probably the most famous one. You have Zoopla, and you have Spare Room. Spare Room is only really for people who um, are looking to share like looking for flatmates. Um, really good option though, if that's what you're looking for, it's perfect. Um, there's also another advantage to that website, which I'll come back to. So out of Rightmove and Zoopla, Rightmove's the famous one. I actually prefer Zoopla. Reason for that is because I don't want to flat share. There was actually um, a box you could tick for shared accommodation or not. Um, and that allowed me to filter that out. Whereas Rightmove, you can't filter that out. And it drives me insane. Cause I'm like, oh, this looks nice. And it's like to share. And I'm like, this isn't, I don't want to share. Why can't I just filter you out? Now the benefit with Spare Room, if you're still debating whereabouts in London you want to live, um, Spare Room has this website called um, London Location Wizard, London Lo Area Wizard, something to that effect. I'll put it on the screen. Um, now what you do with that is it gives you all these uh, categories and you can tick what's important to you. So you can put like safe, historic, leafy, family friendly, if you were looking for a family home, or if you like want to go out and party, you do nightlife, things are happening, main street, <laughs> like young, hip, whatever. Um, and you can pick five different attributes and then it searches all of London and then it ranks the ones that fit your criteria best, which um, is the only website I've seen that does that and it's so good. Whether you're looking to flat share or not, it just tells you and you can put in your, your um, budget as well into that. So it's just such a good tool. I'm gonna link it below. I use it all the time because for a foreigner, I don't really know the reputations of different suburbs and areas. Um, and generally in my experience, the nicer the suburb sounds, the worse it is. <laughs> like at home, you know, if there's any Australians watching, they'll know Riverwood um, sounds like a nice suburb and it isn't. You don't want to live in Riverwood. But then you have somewhere like, which is very expensive, but sounds weird. <laughs> You're like, why would you live in Coogee? Anyways, so once you find somewhere you like, you found it on the website, you like this ticks my boxes, call the agent, say, I would like to get a viewing of this place, get a viewing within 24 hours. Property in London moves fast. Every video you watch will tell you that. They are not lying. It's, it's not worth going to a viewing for a property that's been online for more than two weeks because there's something wrong with it. The properties I've looked at were either overpriced, super old, unfurnished, unfinished, um, next to destroyed council houses, um, on train lines, all the ones that were there for two weeks. Um, and we got this place, came up in the morning. We viewed it at the afternoon. And by the night time we had an offer on it um, and by Tuesday, this was all on Monday, by Tuesday we had a deposit on it and it was off the market. That's how fast it moves. <laughs> so you really need to be on your website, whichever one you've chosen, every single day looking for new properties, getting viewings and as many as you can back them up. Obviously you will probably have commitments like a job, but do your best to squeeze them all in together um, and see as many as you can in a short period of time. Um, it will really, really, really help. Um, we did 12 in two days to put in perspective. We literally got to London and that's all we did. So I touched on this earlier. If you're moving abroad, a lot of people sometimes will see a place online, put a deposit down online, and then they have accommodation sorted, which does make it easy for your visa. Um, and in general makes your life easier, but the risks, to be honest, completely outweigh the negative, the positives because you don't even know if the place smells on photos. I did use this um, service, which I think would be helpful, um, called Homey. Um, they, you basically pay them 80 pounds and they can do everything remotely for you if you would like. 
and they get they organize viewings for you in person if you want to do it in person or remotely um, and they drive you around to all the viewings so they'll back them up and drive you to everywhere however they only do zones one and two so keep that in mind no so you know your budget you know who you want to live with you know where you want to live you found a place you Put your offer in um honestly the prop the downside with london is that you need to kind of make a snap decision so i was making offers while in the viewing because i was so desperate we were the first people to view this place and i was like i'll take it give me take it take the money take my deposit um so the way it works is that you make an offer you say i want to pay x amount the landlord reviews it they come back you haggle once it's agreed on you put down a holding deposit and so that's when they do the background checks they check your financials, any references you have, anything like that. You're, they check that you do work where you say you work and stuff like that. Um, and then during that time, you just kind of holding out and hoping nothing goes wrong. Then after that, you have to put down five weeks deposit. A new law came in in June in 2019, which is this year, saying that they can't ask for more than four weeks rent. You have to pay that, you will pay agent fees which are roughly i've heard pretty much everyone costs about 500 pounds which sucks because you don't even get anything for that it's so much money um and then you also um put down your deposit um, now make sure that deposit that you pay your landlord um comes off your rent because you're always paying a month ahead and then also your your security deposit now that should go into a mutual fund so essentially not going into the landlord's pocket the reason for that is that it's protected so that it's in escrow in case anything goes wrong on either side um but yeah make sure that is a thing because there are some dodgy landlords out there that will just spend it and then you can't get it back when you leave um when you're in the debate stage with the price that's the time to bring up any repairs um you are totally entitled to ask for a professional clean but make sure you do ask for it before you move in because um they won't do it automatically don't assume the place will be cleaned unless you ask for it and any other changes you want made you can ask for them to do that stuff um but yeah other than that i we had a new place so it didn't really um we didn't have to ask for anything so but i know you can ask for repairs paint jobs new carpet a lot of places will come furnished i chose unfurnished because of i had a dog and i was like i don't want to get my dog's fur and smell or whatever on other people's stuff just to be considerate um however they will offer you a mattress please just buy your own mattress it's like 190 pounds from ikea it's really not worth it getting a secondhand mattress gross gross love yourself more <laughs> when you're looking for when you're looking for properties um some things to check for would be to check the water pressure to check if it's double glazed to check airflow you only really get one viewing at a place so it's really really go through it thoroughly um however i got pretty desperate so the, my, my standards got so low at that point but if you've got more time because we were obviously in a hotel when we went through it we do more homework than we did but we just got so fortunate with this place so once you've done all your paperwork you've signed your leases have agreed on a, of a rent, rent price our landlord actually made us put like auto direct deposits down um and then you finally have a date that you can say on this date I get my keys you get your keys and you can move yourself in um, and that should be it um, we had a few times the landlord would come in to check because it was a new build um, they just renovated it they needed to do some checks in terms of like smoke detectors working all that kind of stuff water pressure I'm going to make a video about how expensive it is to live in London where I'll go into a bit more detail about bills um, council tax bans which I chose a bad council tax ban so please when you're looking at your like overall cost factoring council tax because it varies so much depending on where you are in London yeah so I'm gonna do a video on you know council tax uh, water access electricity bills heating bills um, food transport everything on the costs of how much it actually costs to live in London which might be helpful if you're looking to move to London tell me in the comments below if you have other gems of knowledge in terms of how moving apartments in or flats <laughs> should say flats it's london or flats <laughs> give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and so everybody hit subscribe so i can see you next time bye